everyone. This is Attorney Latrice Knighton, and I'm ready to get started with our topic for today, how to strategically prepare for divorce. This is one of my favorite topics here um, because it gives you a great outline of what you need to be doing right now to get ready for your divorce. Now, before we get started, one of the things that I'm going to request of you, and I know it's going to be tough, but I've already done it, is I want you to silence your phones, close your door, and give yourself this time to discover some new information. Why? Because you matter. What happens to you matters, and so now is the time to get rid of all your current distractions and learn how to prepare your, your money, self, and kids for divorce to get the best outcome. Now, I want you to stay until the very end because I will tell you at the end of this webinar how to get your hands on more free information about determining support, placement and custody of your kids, how assets are divided, and much more. So stay with me, everyone. Most people fear divorce. There is a lot of uncertainty about what is going to happen and whether you and your kids are going to be okay after the divorce is finalized. One of the three top divorce fears that I hear often is, will I have enough money? Will I be able to make my uh, monthly bills, uh, save for retirement, and buy another house? Another question I hear frequently is, when will I see my kids? Um, what days of the week will my husband see them? or my wife, um, will I have to share them 50-50? Um, can I have more placement of the kids? And um, what does the court think about that? A third fear, will I be happy in the future? Because right now, when you're, if you're thinking about going through a divorce, there is some pain going on in your life. Either there's a disagreement currently going on between you and your spouse, about money, about the kids, about um, your relationships between each other or with family members. There's typically a lot of stress going on. So a lot of people worry about whether, they'll, whether or not they'll be happy in the future and if the divorce is worth it to them. From all my years of experience, I will say that the best preparation for tomorrow is doing your best today. So I'm going to get you on the road to get started but know that each day um, you're going to learn something new and each day that you're preparing for this process, you've done well, even if it's taken only a small step. You're in the right place if you want to protect your financial future. If you want to make certain that you can maintain your lifestyle, get your fair share of the marital property, and be prepared to handle your financial matters in the future. You're also in the right place if you want to protect your children. You want to know how to talk to them about uh, you going through a divorce. You want to know um, that they're going to be well cared for if they're not in your home. That your spouse will be able to uh, meet their needs on a daily basis. And that you guys will be able to co-parent together in the future. You're also in the right place if you want to protect your future. You want a, a strong future. Uh, you want um, help to conquer all your fears and move bravely towards a new future. And you're ready to open yourself up to new possibilities and opportunities and things that you imagined. Here at Sterling Law Office, we focus on helping families move forward. And this is why we've come up with these series of webinars to give you information um, to help you move forward in the future. Sterling Law Offices, um, the good thing that I can tell you about our firm is that we've been awarded several prestigious awards, such as super lawyers and leading lawyers. Our attorneys have been um, found to be 40 under 40. We work with a lot of um, agencies that all focus on family law because that is our sole for focus here is to help families in divorce, custody and placements, guardianships, 
those matters that really impact the family. And our attorneys have over 100 years of experience, and we have experience in front of judges in multiple counties. Um, we work with experts in the financial uh, therapy, um, vocational um, fields, business appraisals, etc. We know experts in just about everything. And we keep these relationships going to have um, to help our clients have successful outcomes and um, plans for the future. Now, even though we've won all those awards, we've um, made all these connections and joined all these organizations, the one thing that matters to us the most is what our clients think of us. Um, if you go on our website, we have 558 reviews right now. And the number goes up daily, so I may be telling you this and the numbers are already increased. But we've got 4 out of 4.4 out of 5 um, stars. And you can see all of the different reviews that people are saying about us. And these are actually taken comments that are taken straight off of our website from our former clients and current clients. Our focus is to give you the best strategies, to give you the best outcome. Because again, we're helping families move forward and you being able to move forward with a strong financial future, strong relationships with your kids, and a strong plan is what we are here to help you do. Now, I'm going to talk to you about the truths about divorce. Because there are many things if you're new to this process that you're probably uncertain about, but I want to spell out for you what all my years of experience have taught me. Number one, divorce takes longer than you think. Um, it's from you gathering up the information that you need to file for divorce to uh, reach an agreement and um, getting a final hearing date. There's a lot of steps in between. And many times people going through divorce are just really ready to move forward. But um, here at Sterling, we can kind of give you an idea of, after speaking with you and learning more about you and your family, how long it will take because there's lots of different hearings and document collections we can do for you to keep your case moving forward. Um, but it's normally typically longer than most people think. Um, second tip is that you and your spouse won't agree on everything. Now, not everyone has um, huge disagreements on everything. There are some families where they're all, they have an idea of what they want to do. Sometimes things come up like they forgot about uh, a gift that they wanted or uh, a holiday. They're not quite sure how they're going to share holidays when they haven't done it before. Um, but there's going to be something that you and your spouse are not going to agree on. Either it's going to be minor or it's going to be major. And there are some families that battle it out for everything. Uh, and I've even done six-day trials on short marriages without kids. That's how um, contentious that some people can be. But that's not everyone. Third tip is... Uh, it's common for parents to have disagreements about their children. You know, um, I remind my clients that the two of you have been raised by parents and have different experiences and different expectations about what's happening, going to happen between you and your kids. And sometimes, um, because you live in the same house, they meld. But when you guys are no longer living in the same house, sometimes um, those disagreements pop up. But... Um, there's lots of tools and individuals and even your attorney can help come up with some really great ideas to lessen the disagreements and reach an agreement. Fourth, your spouse may try to hide things from you. Um, yes, we always would like to believe um, that your, our spouses are reporting everything and being truthful about everything, but, you know, um, Sometimes it's necessary to dig a little deeper and not to assume that everything that your spouse tells you is true. And we can kind of give you some tips on, on what to look for um, to make sure that nothing's being hidden from you. And sometimes the reason why they're doing that is, is not because it's money-driven. It's more of shame or um, fear that they won't have as much placement time with the kids. Um, so we have to make sure that everything, every rock is on turn. Tip is that this process is very challenging. It's challenging from the perspective of there's different um, things that you will be um, asked to do by the courts. There are diff 
different things you're going to want your attorney to do for you, um, but we can definitely help you. Because right now, it's time for you to take charge. For you to have the information of what you need to be doing right now so that you feel like you're in the driver's seat and that you can move forward with confidence. So I want you to really get to that next place of you feeling in charge. Now we're going to get started on our webinar for today, which is how to strategically prepare for divorce. And today I'm going to give you four simple steps that you can do to prepare for your divorce. First step. Collect your financial documents. Um, the reason why you need to collect your financial documents is because sometimes you think you know everything that you own, or sometimes you start forgetting um, all that you own and how much value those things have. So when you're collecting financial documents, I want you to collect um, statements that show income, your debts and liabilities, as well as your assets. And the reason why I want you to do that um, is because of one client, for example, a hidden money stash. Um, I had a client who uh, was a stay-at-home mom who had a joint bank account with her husband. Um, she had traveled out of the country to visit relatives, and while she was gone, her husband informed her that he was filing for divorce and that he was no longer going to financially support her. And this is when she's out of the country. So she was worried. She came to my office um, when she came back home. And the first thing I said to her is, okay, how much money was in the joint account? And she didn't know. She was a little embarrassed by that. And there's not a problem with that. Um, but she just never kept up to it because she had just taken a sum of money and stayed on budget and paid her bills, bills each month with the sum of money that she was told to use. So I told her to go to the bank and get the last six months of bank statements because she didn't know how to log on um, and didn't have the password. And when she, what she found after she went and got the statements is that her husband withdrew $10,000 um, a couple months prior to the divorce, which she, of course, was entitled to some of that money. So that's why I'm saying collect your financial statements. Step two, open your own accounts. You want to start creating individual accounts just to give you ease of mind that you have access to money and um, all the documents that you're going to be collecting. So <coughs> you want to open bank accounts. A new individual checking and savings will do. Um, credit accounts, if you think that you need some credit just in case you have some unexpected expenses, as well as, you know, have a way, a place to send all these documents, such as a P.O. box, or a new email account. Um, one client I had, uh, her husband had a gambling addiction that she didn't know of. Um, he was going to the casino on what she found out to be a weekly basis. Again, she found out by looking at bank statements. The ATM at the casino, when you withdrew, it would show in the bank statement the address of the ATM that was used, and it was the casino. So her husband was taking this money out of the joint account where the mortgage was coming away, coming being paid out of. So my client was um, very concerned that she wouldn't be able to pay her mortgage. So right away, I had her set up an individual checking and had her pay uh, check rerouted into that bank account and her mortgage was paid each month. Step three, create a plan for separate lives. If you are um, a parent and you are considering divorce, you now need to think of what's this going to look like. Um, you have to determine where you're, where you're going to live, what bills you will be accountable for, and what your spouse will pay. Again, budgeting is a, a huge piece of this, but... Um, it's not the only piece because you have to figure out how you're going to share the kids and talk to the kids about what's going on. Because if one of you is moving out or if there's a lot of tension in the air, the kids probably are concerned something's going on. Um, tug of war. I have lots of clients who actually fit under this circumstance where um, they've been told that you know in order to keep the kids, they need to stay in the house and the house becomes very toxic because they're fighting over everything while living together. Um, if you are in that scenario where things aren't going well between you and your 
spouse and it's war well war of the roses when you're living together we need to talk right away and come up with a plan um and there's temporary orders that can be um made by the court about where the two of you will be staying and what bills you're going to be paying because you don't want to live uh, in that situation step four find the right guides um, divorce is going to be a new process to you and you're going to need help um, understanding what you should and should not be doing if you want really to get the best outcome. So you got to understand who's going to help you with, understand the law. Are you, are you going to use a lawyer that you hire or a mediator? Um, who is going to help you understand your money? Um, and who's going to be able there to help you and your kids so they could be a counselor? And what do you need to do right now to prepare for the future? And sometimes People who are in transition need uh, a new job because they want to make more money so they can pay for their bills or just a life coach, someone to guide them through the divorce process. It's important for you to know the difference between uh, an attorney and a mediator. Um, an attorney is an individual that you hire to represent your interests well versus a mediator who you, both you and your spouse actually hire and they sit in a room with you and help you hash out an agreement. So they'll also go from help you with everything, actually, um, from filing the paperwork and making sure that's done correctly to helping you uh, reach agreements and having those tough conversations about money, assets, debts, liabilities, and the kids. And so that you, the two of you, can save money on fees, but also know that your divorce agreement is done right and then and then is written in a way that represents what the two of you both want. Um, we do both here. Um, we can represent you and only your interests in court, but we also um, offer mediation services as well, which you can find out more on our website. So the four ways to, in conclusion, strategically prepare for divorce. Step one, collect your financial documents. Step two, open new accounts your bank, credit accounts, and um, email account. Step three, create a plan for separate lives, about how you're going to pay for bills, how you're going to share the kids, etc. And step four, find the right guides, including an attorney, financial advisor, etc. Um, if you want more um, information about what you should be doing because you have some unique situations or concerns that you have, you can always call us and schedule a strategy session. We'll sit down with you, listen to what's been going on with you and your family and your spouse, and kind of give you an idea of what, you, what steps you need to be taking based on your situation. Um, you can find out more about how to schedule um, a strategy session by going back on our website at www.sterlinglawyers.com and give us a call or email us and we'll get back to you. I enjoyed uh, talking with you guys today. Uh, I'll see you next time on our next webinar. Also, if you um, have some specific questions, again, please call the office and consider just uh, setting up a strategy session. I know those sessions have been really helpful. Again, this is Attorney Latrice Knight, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day, everyone.